Hi everybody! I had a request on my making frit video of how to actually apply frit to your beads. And so that's what I'm going to show in this video. And the bead I made is the blue and orange one on the right. As you can see, I like to swirl my frit a lot. So it's not necessary. Um, the pink one is not swirled. So it's just basically what you prefer. So what you want to do first is you want to establish your base bead. I usually like to have a barrel shape. If you have a round bead, uh, it's a little harder to apply the frit and you basically need um, a, a larger mass of frit on your tray. I have just a little metal flat tray. So I like to start with just a barrel shape and so then it can roll a lot more evenly across the surface of the bead. But if you had a nice deeper container, it's a lot easier to roll round beads also. So basically you just heat up the whole bead nice and glowing and then roll it in your frit. And my frit is a frit that I made myself. So basically it's 104 COE. So it's the same COE glass that I'm putting on the surface as my base bead. Now if you bought some frits, they could be 96 COE. And you have to be a little bit more careful about how much you add to your bead because it is a different uh, coefficient of expansion. And so basically you only want to add 5 to 10 percent of your bead mass in frit. So uh, I'm going to roll this again because I have no limit in how much frit I can add. But I'm just going to show you here a slowed down, zoomed in picture of one layer of frit applied to my bead. And if I was happy with this, I could just stop there and that would be fine. But I'm going to roll, I'm going to put a little bit more. So I'm trying to bulk up my frit there, get a little thicker so I can roll it again. And I'm doing the same thing. You want to heat your whole base. I want to get it a little straight first, but I want to heat my whole base nice and glowing, a nice bright glow to it, and then roll it in the frit until I've picked up as much as I want. Now I have a little piece of frit sticking out of the end there, and I just take my tool and shove it back up. So if they do stick off the edges, you can use your marver or, your, or a tool to fix it. But also, you can actually pick up individual pieces of frit and place them where it doesn't seem like it, any frit attached. Like if you want to fill in little gaps where there's no frit, you could do that too. So I'm attaching a couple pieces of frit there just to cover some blank spaces. And when I'm happy with it, I just melt it all in. And uh, another note, especially if you're using 96 COE, sometimes you can notice that the frit might start to boil. So you might want to start melting it in a little farther back in your flame. Uh, so if you notice um, any like edges starting to boil or bubble, just move your bead back in the flame and heat a little more slowly. And once it starts melting nicely, you can move it up in your flame. So just a little side note there. But this is 104 and I'm not having any trouble with that. So I was able to put it straight into the flame. And so now I'm shaping back into my barrel, into my original barrel again. And I'm gonna do another zoom in shot. And so this is with two layers of frit. And I could have just stopped right here and left it as this. Or I could have shaped it a little more uh, to the shape I want. But I'm going to swirl this frit now. And of course, this is something you don't have to do, but it's just another uh, technique showing what I do with some of my beads. So in case you want to swirl your frit, this is how you do it. And you can either take um, like a clear stringer of glass if you want. So then it won't affect 
any colors, you know, underneath. Um, in this case, I didn't have a clear stringer available, so I'm using another orange stringer, so it's very similar to my frit that I have on the surface. And I just heat, start heating the bead, and I just pull around the whole bead. And I'm keeping the bottom of the bead kind of warm in the flame, and I'm just pulling it and wiggling it and swirling it around the surface. And so that's basically all you want to do if you want to swirl. I'll probably also do another video on how to do the gravity swirl where you're not touching it with other glass at all. And that's a different technique you can do. So now I'm going to swirl a little bit in certain sections in the opposite direction. So I'm rolling the bead the other way and I'm swirling upward. And I'm really not trying to leave any of the stringer trailing onto the bead. I'm actually just swirling the glass that's on there. So now I'm just speeding up just to show you um, how I'm going to shape it now. And I'm also going to encase this just to show you how to encase a frit bead. Basically the same way you encase anything, any other bead. But now I'm starting to shape. I didn't want just a barrel shape. I want a cone shape or a tapered barrel. So now I'm tapering down the ends to start working on my final shape. And so I'm using my other um, vessel cone roller. And I'm just shaping it into a nice barrel shape. And here's another close-up with the swirled frit. And now I could have just left this bead like this if I was happy and put it in the kiln. It probably needs a little more shaping though. It's not very straight. <laughs> but I could have just left it like this. But now I'm going to show encasing. And it looks like I got a little bit of dirt maybe from a, my tool on my bead. So I am taking a damp paper towel and just dabbing it really quickly to get the little dust or something that was on my bead off of there. So now I'm encasing the bead. So I'm just basically heating up the bottom of my clear rod really hot and doing shorter stripes. Just little stripings of glass. I didn't want a really thick encasement. So I'm trying to put on a th slightly thinner layer. And so I just heat up that clear rod really hot and then swipe it on. Make sure I put a little extra at the ends because you want to cover the ends of your bead also with the clear. And then I want to try to push over that clear to get it close to the, as close to the mandrel as I can. So I'm trying to encase all the color I can on either side with that clear. And it doesn't have to go all the way. You don't want to touch the mandrel with your clear. You just want to get it really close and then heating will help it the rest of the way. So now I'm just going to heat my whole bead and marver it a little bit more and finish shaping it. And so I decided after I started heating this that I actually wanted to go to more of a teardrop shape. And so I'm actually going to change the shape. Um, instead of a barrel, I'm going to actually make a little teardrop and I'm going to flatten it. And of course, this is something you definitely don't have to do. Um, it's just showing that you can actually change the shape of your bead even after you have frit on it. So I'm actually marvering it down so that it's more of a cone shape and fatter at the bottom where my hand is. So I'm doing a nice cone shape. And then I'm going to roll the bottom up a little bit more to kind of round it. And that's where I do that right there. So I get a little cone-ish shape to it. And now I'm going to flatten it. 
and I want to look straight down at my bead when I'm flattening so I know I'm not doing it crooked on an angle and I know my mandrels right in the center of the glass uh, you don't want your glass being really thin on one side and really thick on the other when you smash so you want to make sure you look right down at it when you're smashing it and so now I'm heating it out I'm rounding it a little bit more out and I'm getting rid of the chill marks and trying to get both sides even and one side's a little rounder than the other so I'm kind of flattening that down on one side until it looks fairly even and there's my little cone so I'm just gonna add you can add any kind of decoration you want to the top of course on your bead I'm just adding a little tiny moon little tiny silvered ivory moon to the top and I want to make sure that's melted in enough so that it's not sticking out too far that it'll pop off and there's the actual final bead thanks for watching